Hey everybody, Eric here. Today, I want to do a quick refresher on working with animations using native tools in SketchUp. But more importantly, I want to look at actually two different ways to do animations right here, right now. So when I say two different ways to do animations, I think uh, we all know, hopefully by now, that sort of the animation tools or features in SketchUp are kind of designed for architectural fly-throughs. So when we have a scene, we can move from one part of the model to another. We move the camera from one part of the model or the viewer, and that's where we're animating, sort of we're animating the camera path. But there actually is a way to animate objects just using native tools as well. So let's do kind of a quick review of some tips and tricks to get this process to hopefully work a little bit smoother or at least anticipate the results that you want um, right now together. So let's just go ahead and get to it. OK, so I've got my model here. This is the turning torso in Malmo, Sweden, if anyone's been there or recognize it. And I've got this gal down here. And uh, the first animation kind of I wanted to do was just, I don't know, I'm just pretending as if I'm there in real life, which would be awesome, which I'm not. But let's just, let's just say that someday I'll be I hope to get there. And until then, I'm going to live vicariously through this um, scale figure. So in this case, I would set up what is my starting scene. And I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to do that. So you need scenes to in order to be able to do animations. I don't need any of these other windows open right now. I will need my scenes panel in just a minute, so I'll leave that here. So you've got to have a scene to do an animation because you need to be able to know that you're moving from one camera angle to another. I also want to open up under model info. There are some animation settings here under this first tab animations. So by default, when you first open SketchUp, you'll notice that we have scene transitions turned on. So what that means is for those that are sort of brand new to SketchUp, if I moved my camera, in this case, I'm just going to move my, my eyeball. Um, I'm going to look from down to up and add a scene. What it's going to do when I click back and forth, you're going to see it's actually animating the difference between those two. Now, I'll say that by default when I'm working, not by default with SketchUp, but my default is basically to turn this off. And then I save that as a template. So every time I open a new SketchUp file, I want to go from scene to scene. I want it to change instantly. So that's actually the opposite of animating. Actually, while I'm working, I want to make sure that I'm not seeing any camera movement. But since we're animating, we want that on. So let's think about quickly how long we think that sort of transition needs to be. By uh, default, it might be, I think, two seconds is SketchUp's default. But let's say I want to slow that down a little bit and enter something like five seconds. So you're going to see that we're going to get a much slower pan now as she sort of tilts her camera and you know cranes her neck back and sort of gets the whole tower into the view. Now, if you have multiple um, scenes, you can delay between them. Now, I only have two, so there's really technically no delay. But if I had a third one and I wanted to pause here for a moment, I can add a delay. Like, for example, I want to add a three second delay before I go to look to my next spot. So let's do another scene. I'm going to, this case, I'm going to, instead of animating just what I'm seeing from the ground level, I'm actually going to lift myself off. Maybe this is a drone's eye view. So I'm actually going to try to sort of stay somewhat in that position. Well, let me go back, actually, because I think I rotated. Oh, here's a tip. You can disable scene transitions as you're navigating so that you don't have to wait like I just did, where I was like, oh, I want to go back to the beginning scene. Well, in this case, you don't have to, if you turn this off while you're navigating, um, that actually helps you out a lot because you don't have to wait that five seconds. So here, if I stop here, and then I want to kind of just lift the camera up from here. So I want to, my eye height right now is at 8 feet. What happens if I put in something like 200 feet, uh, 300 feet? I don't know. I haven't done this 500 feet. I'm trying to get somewhat to the top of the tower. So I'm just guessing. Um, so that's cool. That gets me to the top of the tower. Let's put something like 1,000 feet. I actually want to get, not only do I want to be up, but I want to look down at the tower. So just be careful that if you turn like this, you're going to notice that the camera will twist as it goes. So you kind of want to hold, if you can, somewhat of the same orientation that you used when you were um, when you were at the ground. So I want to get this sort of bird's eye view. So I'm going to add that scene. And then because my scene transitions are disabled, I can pop back to my last view 
turn on scene transitions, and then see what that sort of, call it the drone camera shot looks like. And that was pretty cool. That was pretty smooth. So five seconds was good. I could slow that down if I wanted to. But again, if this is part of a longer animation, that five seconds or six seconds, it's going to apply to all of the scenes. So just something to keep in mind as far as the pacing. Now, I have a slide delay time for three seconds in here. Now, you didn't see it because I was only going between the two scenes. But let's go all the way back to the beginning and let's see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and play this whole animation from the beginning and see what it looks like. So this time I want to make sure I'm I'm on my first scene. Uh, I've got my scene transitions on, my slide delay on. I'm going to click right click on the first one and say play animation. Now, there may be a delay on the beginning as well. So you'll notice that we're not actually moving yet. So that's sort of I don't know whether that's the scene transition personally or whether that's the slide delay that creates that pause before it actually starts. Um and now so we've got you'll notice that there was a little bit of a pause. Next scene, pause for a moment. And we're going to loop back to the beginning. So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning and we're going to see that again. So let's stop there. I'm going to turn this off by saying disable. So stop play animation. And for right now, I'm just going to uncheck scene transitions. We can use those again and slide delay time. I'll set that back to zero. We'll probably come back to that in just a second. But let's look at one more way to do animations. I said there's in my intro that there's two ways. So the first one is pretty straightforward. That was animating the where how to look around from a fixed position, moving the camera and adjusting the slide delay and the transitions in order to sort of get the camera movements that you you desire. But let's pretend, for example, that this woman here is waiting for her. Let me flip her around the other way. I'll use my handy dandy mirror tool to sort of flip her so that she's looking back towards the tower and she's waiting for her Uber. But unfortunately, the little Citroens that you might find in Sweden um, are busy. So they're going to, they are passing her by. So I want to actually animate an object instead of the camera path now. So if I turn my hidden objects on, you'll see that I've already sort of arrayed some out here. For this, I'm going to start with, now I would probably do this in a new file, but because you, I can't necessarily separate out the, um, I can't separate out two different animations. So for in this example, I would have to start over sort of from scratch. Now I have these cars hidden and they're hidden for a reason because I've already sort of copied multiple objects. And what I want to do is I only want to show one per scene. So in this case, I would add a scene using keyboard shortcut. And then I would come over here and hide this one. So just like keyframing, we're basically keyframing, but we're using an actual object. So I'm using copies of the component. I'm going to add a new scene. Actually, before I do that, this is a kind of a fun trick that I wanted to share that maybe you don't know, um, is that you can actually play animations without the camera location being checked. So that way, objects will move, navigate as the animation's playing. You'll see that in just a second. It's kind of a fun little trick I, I, hope, um, I hope you'll like. So now with the second car showing, and the first one hidden, I can go ahead and add a new scene. Just basically same process, hide, unhide, add. And then hide, unhide, add, and just one more. Hide, unhide, and add. Now I may actually want to do one more where I hide all of them. Um, so that way it's sort of like gives just a little bit of a pause where there's no cars. Now, what happens when I press the scene? You can see if I just click through the scenes, the car is kind of appearing to move. That's kind of cool. Now that one should be hidden. So I'm going to update that. I'm going to try that one more time. There we go. It disappears. So it drives out of the camera frame at that point. And then when you get back to scene one, it comes back in the camera frame. So let's see what happens. Now, in this case, we don't want scene transitions. And if we have no slide delay time, what happens? Let's see what it looks like when we play the animation. It's going very fast. There's literally no delay between scenes. So it's just going continuously, a little too fast. Let's slow that down. Let's go to something like 0.5 seconds in between scenes. It's a little slow. It's almost like um, watching you know, an animation that's or a YouTube video that's buffering and is taking a little while. So let's try 0.2 and see what happens. A little bit better, a little choppy still, 0.1. Okay, it seems to drive a little bit smoother here. Now, of course, the smoother that you want it, you probably have 
you can add more cars, which means more keyframes and more scenes. Now let's pause, let's turn this off for a second. I'm gonna wrap up by saying, remember that I turned off camera location? Well, if I come over here, I can actually navigate using the look around, or I can come over here and just use my hand tool. So now this woman, this poor woman's waiting for her Uber uh, or her Lyft, and it's just not coming. They just won't stop for her um, or her taxi. So unfortunately, she's just gonna have to maybe um, walk to her next destination. So in this case, you can see that we've animated the camera path and we've animated, we've animated an object now as this car sort of comes in and out of the scene. And if I stand right in front of it, let's see if this works. Oh yeah, okay, I can't really get it. It's a little hard, I'll be honest with you, it's a little bit tricky to navigate. There we go, looks like the car is coming right at us. Maybe we don't wanna stand in the middle of the street, maybe we should stand off to the side. Okay. So I'm going to stop there because otherwise I'm just going to have too much fun and I'm just going to keep going and this is going to run on and you're going to say, Eric, stop. You got to know when to stop. So I'm going to stop that animation right there and I'm going to transition really quick. I want to transition just to say thank you. Um, always, 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 as always, thank you for watching these videos. Thanks for entertaining me and letting me play around here with some animations with you today. I hope that you learned something new, even if you knew already sort of how scene transitions and scene delay time in between transitions or in between scenes, even if you already knew how that works, because that those features have been around for a long time. Those are classic SketchUp features. But even just unchecking that camera location when you have an object that's moving, that's kind of a cool trick. I actually made um, a scale figure move and dance, which I thought was kind of a fun idea. You can make a ballerina twirl. Um, there are things like even maybe animating water. There are some things that where this feature could come in handy, but ultimately, you know, it's it's my job to demonstrate it and it's your job to figure out, hey, how can I use this in my project? So I hope you can find a use for this in your project. And as always, don't forget to like, again, comment, share, subscribe, and stay tuned. I will see you next time.